I hope everybody's enjoying PandaCon today, right? Come on, get us, get it going. <laughs> Our next talk, Data Wars, using data to power a customer-centric model. As a world-leading food company, how does Danone stay future-ready while competing today? The answer is in the data. Highlighting how data powers their customer-centric model, can you welcome on stage, please, Danone's Chief Strategy and Insights Officer, Elaine Rodrigo. Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. Very happy to be here today. My name is Elaine Rodrigo, and I'm a Chief Strategy and Insights Officer at Danone, based in Paris. And uh, just in case it's not clear from my title, but I'm not from the tech industry, so I hope that means I can still stay on stage. But I am a tech user. And part of today is really going to be about sharing how in Danone we have been leveraging data to drive a consumer-centric model, just the way that we always have been, but maybe in slightly different ways, leveraging data and digital. So, as I mentioned, I, drive, I actually lead the Strategy and Insights Group, which, to, which really means that we're obsessed about people, and our job is to get everyday deep human insights to inform our brands and strategy. However, in the last years, I would say the last 12 to 18 months since I've been in this uh, role in Danone, the advent of data has really created a huge new source of insights for us to really understand humans and people better. And therefore, we have shifted and started thinking a lot more about how can we humanize data? How can we use data and leverage data to get deeper human insights into people today? But first, maybe a little bit about Danone for those of you who don't know us. Maybe some of you recognize the brands. But really, we are a food company uh, with, a, with a very high purpose around wanting to bring health through food to as many people as possible. We have four health-focused businesses. Uh, you may be familiar with some of these brands. In Essential Plant and Dairy, we have brands like Activia or Actimel. We have a waters business as well with Evian, Volvic or Aqua, for example, in Indonesia. Uh, we have a baby division, Cow and Gate, Aptimil, and we have an advanced medical nutrition business. But as you can see, they're all health-focused. But what happened in the last couple of years, and most of you who know a bit about the FMCG world or maybe come from this world, know that we have actually faced a huge shift in terms of what has been happening in our industry. And we call it in Denon the new paradigm, which is really there was a huge shift in the way that, uh, be, the way that categories were growing, competition was behaving, but specifically with consumers. And really in consumers, there were two things that was happening. Firstly, we talk about health. Health is a hugely trending topic, very important, and it's always been. However, the look of health, the shape of health has changed. It had changed a lot from what we knew, and we needed to find new ways of really unpacking and decoding what health means to consumers. The second thing is something that I don't have to actually talk too much to this particular crowd about, but it's about technology and digital really shifting the way that consumers engage with brands and with innovation, where we see that consumers don't, they, they don't just go online, but they actually live online. And this is changing a lot about the way that we need to engage with consumers, but actually how we can also learn about them. And therefore we said, about a year and a half ago, that we need to reimagine our approach to understanding people, to understanding consumers, because if we want to be truly consumer-centric, we need to adapt to this new paradigm. So what do we do? We've always been about deep human insights. I truly believe that even in a very digital data world, at the end of the day, we're still about people and human beings, and deep human insights will always be relevant. However, we started asking ourselves, could we get more data-enabled human insights? Is this something that could help us really understand based on what people are already saying and posting out there? So, however, but first a small little uh, security announcement before I share with you a few stories about how we are doing this in Denon, which is basically that everything that we do has to be completely ethical and compliant, obviously with GDPR and the like, because this is extremely important. So I'm now going to share with you three short stories about how we're trying to humanize data in Denon and leverage data to actually understand consumers better. 
So I call it of trends, tribes, and tales. So let's start with trends. The first way that we look at data is to actually understand what's trending. And trends is something really, I mean, if you look at, we've been, most uh, FMCG companies have been looking at trends, yeah? Food trends, consumer trends for years, but really the internet has given us access to almost what you could coin the world's largest focus group with billions of uh, users creating millions of pieces of content. So it's just amazing information. You don't even have to ask them. They're actually telling you what they think in a very natural state. So therefore, we adopt, we have our own social listening platform, which we affectionately call Redali, where we actually listen to six big areas of trends around for example, how people are leading always on lives in the cloud or about health or about uh, what delights people. And this is how we try to stay continuously on trend uh, and understand what's going out there. So social listening is a huge part now in terms of how we are actually trying to track and understand trends. And then secondly, we also leverage the, I guess, internally workplace to actually spread and animate what we know about these trends so that we can drive it into our everyday innovation and brand strategy. So, there are lots of trends, as I mentioned, but one of them, obviously, that's particularly important in a food company and actually to consumers is food trends. You'll be amazed at how much people talk about food and post about food. And I just want to share with you a short little video of how when you really understand a key insight about consumer trends uh, and insights, you can actually come up with a pretty funny piece of copy. Hi, my name's Riley, I'm your tech carry today, so welcome to the Confusion Kitchen. So our kitchen is holistic organismic, which means basically we're trying to stay up with the latest food trends. So right now we are biodynamic, low-carb, raw food only. Um, I'll be right back to talk you through everything, alright? Menu changing! Yes, Chef! So you guys probably heard the kitchen is changing. So we are paleo now, I hear from the chef. So it's all high protein and we're combining the slow food techniques, all right? We'll be back to that in a second. So the first we have our ostrich egg and then the duck is coming very soon. I'm just gonna slowly roast that for you, man. Thank you, chef. So guys, the menu's changed as you heard, so uh, bad news is meat is off the menu, but the good news is gluten is back. So, we've got pizza or pasta, I'll give you a little menu there. Hey, cool. Look at that last bit. There you go. Liz is straight. It's got a piece of the Alright guys, here is the latest food trend in town. Say hello to Karma Foods. So, the idea of this one is that you give your food a bit of compliment before you eat it. I don't want to eat the little goldfish. <laughs> Great news, guys, it is a kombucha rave. So, we are all liquid now. It's a kombucha shot, it's on the house. It's fermented mushroom, you're gonna love it. Kombucha shot for yourself. Get on board the kombucha rave. Madam, <laughs> <laughs> for that for you. There you are, you wanna take that? And that one for yourself, madam. See that mirror right there? There's two cameras behind each one of those. Okay, just a small light. <laughs> I think we've all felt like that, right? I don't know, sometimes I go into a restaurant now and I don't even know what is on the menu and it's not because it's in French. So anyway, so that was what we're looking at at the moment in trends. The next area that we're going to look at in trends is we're starting to look at what we call social trend prediction. You know, I've been doing this kind of job for 20 over years now, and this is almost like the, the holy grail, like having a, a crystal ball to know what was going to come and to know when the tipping point is going to come. And actually with social listening, we're very, very close, I would say, to actually being able to predict what might be coming by listening to different types of people at different stages along a trend evolution. So, so that's it on trends. That was my first story. My second story is about tribes. And this is really about how the idea of approaching segmentation is also changing in most consumer goods companies versus maybe a more traditional consumer segmentation persona style to thinking of groups of people such as tribes uh, that are actually united by passion points. So just a few things. If I were to ask you, 
who do you think is the top segment interested in beer in France? You probably have some kind of a persona in mind right now. But the data says that actually it's cooking enthusiasts, enthusiasts age 45 plus, not really what I would have expected. And then if I ask another question, so I live in France, okay? So all these examples are French, but the top segment interested in champagne in France. So once again, you start having a little bit of an image in your head and it's technophile and auto enthusiast males. And I guess the point I'm trying to make is that sometimes it's not as obvious. And with data and with digital, we are able to actually understand and actually discover, I guess, who people, I mean, who these people really are, what their passion points are, what their media behaviors are, and it really helps, right? It really helps in terms of precision marketing, which is something that we're really trying to drive more as well and done on online. So an example, another example is Volvic. So this is one of our water brands. Um, and really what we did with Volvic in the UK last year was to actually identify 16 different tribes, or you might call them audiences, and actually have these short YouTube bumper ads. And the idea was to actually have a creative message that was relevant to each person. So it speaks to that person's own personal volcano. So very short, obviously, just bumper ads. As I mentioned, there were 16 of them. Some worked better, some don't. That's also part, actually, about experimenting with data. So you learn a lot as you go along. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, right? But you create a wheel of learning. But in this case, we got a 40% ad recall lift, and we got some good sales lift numbers as well, which I'm unable to share, but we're happy with it. Okay, so tribes is the second thing that we're doing at the moment and really trying to push hard in terms of how we leverage data. The third story is about what I call turning data into tales. And really, this is about how you turn data into real life human stories, right? Um, and the example I have relates to culture. You know, a lot about, about getting to deep human insights is about decoding and unpacking and understanding culture, which is really the key about how people make meaningful human connections. Food culture is the dominant culture of the moment. If you go on Instagram, if you just look around, this is, it's huge and it's really grown so much in the last few years, particularly enabled by technology and things like, for example, like Instagram, right? So our question was basically, how can we actually leverage visuals and pictures to understand more about food culture? Because we have been trying to ask people and trying to ask consumers what they think about health, what they think about food. But then we sort of thought, if they're already sharing all this and they want to tell us about it, why don't we actually see what they're actually doing and try to get insights from that? And in this, actually, to really understand deep human insight, we actually looked to a machine. And what, what do I mean by that? We have, uh, in Danone, a history of using semiotics, right, uh, which, is a, which is a very specific technique to really try to understand what is going on from visuals, packaging and pictures, etc. And we experimented with creating an AI version or working with a company that actually has an AI machine version of a semiotics robot. So I'd like you to meet Eva. Eva is a, as I mentioned, an AI-driven semiotician. Um, she stands, EVA stands for Enhanced Visual Analytics, and is actually offered by one of our partner companies, Kenta. And we actually, we used, uh, we looked at Ava, and we actually understood, we were able to decode by looking at thousands of Instagram pictures around the world, what people might be saying and start clustering insights together. So we tend to look at things at aggregate levels to try to understand what are these eight or 10 big things that are going on around the world. And this is just a sample of what some of that look like, a like dashboard, but it probably looks familiar to you on the right side. Those are typical kind of Instagram type pictures and Eva groups it together based on some form of semiotics technology, identifying hashtags, also geodata, we're a global company. So we need to understand which Insights are perhaps more relevant in Latin America, which ones are more relevant in Asia, etc. So through EVA, we, which we, we actually ran a few studies, but in this particular one, we found a new world of health, health that was different to, to the health that we knew. Right? Some of these were more familiar, for example, wholesome nourishment or superfoods we knew. 
right? But some new ones like appearance or alchemy, you know, alchemy is not usually something you think about when we're thinking about food. And these were really interesting because it sparked and inspired us to think of new areas for growth and for innovation. So from those three stories, they were short stories, really. I mean, the idea was to bring to life to you some simple ways that we're actually leveraging data to understand and decode deep human insights. And we're using it in different ways. We are using it for growth. So we are looking, using it to identify through trends and other things to identify new growth spaces. For example, we're using it for innovation and we are using it for brand experiences. So through those three stories, I hope it's clear we are, we are starting to, to leap into this space. I would say it's very new for us. Uh, we're not all the way to bright. We are really just starting. Uh, but we're definitely confident that we're going to keep pushing in this because this is definitely the way to go. So finally, because really what we believe is data, digital technology can really help us to get deep human insights, you know, to, and data can help us with this. Within Danon, we call it hashtag humanized data because really at the end of the day, the idea is to get deep insights into people, real people like all of you, so that we can together actually achieve our purpose of bringing health to as many people around the world as possible. Thank you.